So this guy just got to my pull away test video. And so he wrote me a message and he said, hi, Harry. I recently watched an old video of yours regarding men's pull away tests. Kind of intrigued me a bit. So I was wondering if you can help clarify a few things. So first the question he said was, how can men properly execute this test to regain a woman's interest? Example, do we just cut contact? Do we start texting less? Example. So basically he's saying if a woman starts pulling away, how do we how do we execute our own version of the pull away test and or doing no contact, right? And he's saying it, how do we do this in a way that's going to regain her interest? And so this is the thing that I try to push to you guys is that you pulling away from a woman or going no contact, this is where I again say you're doing it not for her. Like you're going no contact because she stopped reaching out or she's being less uh, interactive with you, right? And you're basically saying, oh, she seems to be going away. Maybe she needs space. Maybe she needs time. Maybe she's no longer interested and can't tell you. But in either case, you're going no contact because at this point, you trying to chase her down is not going to be a winning strategy. And you're going legit no contact, meaning you're cutting off contact and you're moving on to other potential prospects that are out there. But as a guy, you just need to keep in mind that going no contact, it could possibly result in her wanting to reach out. I have a book on my website called uh, 10 Steps to Winning Back Your Ex-Girlfriend. And it's a bevy of things that you need to be doing in during the breakup process to eventually be the person that she would want you to be at the point that she decides to reach out or whatever, or you decide to reach out to her. But the one thing I say, the first rule that, that I say in that book is that if a woman comes to you and says either I don't want to be with you anymore or she starts ghosting or wherever they are or we need time to spend time apart or whatever, that your response should be, okay. Like you don't go into, but how could you, but we should be together. What can I do? I'm begging this and that. No, your first response should be like, well, if that's what you want, totally cool. And you're going to say, hey, you know what? If you change your mind later and I'm still available, then reach out. We'll see what's what. But you don't go into that begging or pleading because sometimes, again, women are pulling away because their thought process at that point is you're too needy, you're too desperate, you're not treating them the way they want to be treated. And so therefore they got to get away from you for a while. And that while could be a day, a week, a month, a year, whatever, you know? But the point is that you don't then try to go fight that, right? And so you need to know going no contact you're, you're not trying to do that. Like, okay, I'm going to go. No, because I've seen plenty of gurus be like, okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go no contact. And you're going to go no contact for 30 days. And then at the 30th day, you're going to reach out. Well, now you've just ruined no contact. Because the idea is that if you go no contact, you leave her the heck alone. She'll have time to sit with herself and her thoughts and her feelings. And maybe she needs to go out and date some other guys to realize you actually, she was actually dating other trash guys and that you were the cream of the crop. And then the fact that you haven't reached out to her, maybe you weren't as desperate as she thought you were. Maybe she should come check you out again, you know? So the idea of no contact is you're going no contact permanently with the asterisk of, but if she reaches out, then you will take up the conversation and then we'll get to the other questions later. But you know, suffice to say, so yeah, we're not using no contact as a strategy to get her back. We're using no contact as a strategy for you to recognize that you have worth. And that there are other women out there that will want to contact you if you if they they feel so inclined. And that this one decides to trip off and say, oh, whatever reason, you're too much, blah, blah, blah. Hey, we all have the right to stay around with or not be with or be with the people we want. So if her feeling at the moment is like, I don't feel like this is going to work out or I'm feeling whatever it thing and I need to pull away, she's in her right to do that. Just like you're in your right to not wish and hope she's going to come back and to see other women. And that's another thing, too. During no contact, guys, very, very important. I just want to stress this. Please, please, please do not go into no contact, holding on to hope that you're going to get her back and in the process of that, not be going after other women. Because I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, but if I go no contact and then I start talking to other women and then she comes back, she's going to be mad at me for talking to other women. Let her be mad. Because as I said before, sometimes women need to feel a thing to really recognize what's going on in their head. If she comes back to you and you're like, oh, I'm talking to so, such, 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 and she gets mad at you, she has to now go home and think about why she's mad. Oh, is she mad because she's ego tripping? Like she thought you'd find nobody else and you found somebody? Or is she legitimately like, wait a minute, I'm feeling mad because I realized I actually have feelings for this guy and I didn't recognize how deep they went until I got mad at him. See, men are afraid 
of getting women mad or upset or angry, but sometimes that's the exact emotion that they need to feel to realize that they actually want you. And so, yeah, it behooves you during no contact to get your dating profile up and to go out there with your friends and have them meet you, uh, introduce you to other women and other friends out there that you can talk to. And hey, you may find a better option to where when your ex comes back, you're like, actually, you are pretty contentious and she's like on me every night. So you could actually end up finding better. Yes, guys, there could be better out there than this ex or this girl that's starting to flake on you, you know? So no contact, you're going no contact in your head permanently, and you're going to give yourself permission to seek out other women. If the other woman that you wanted originally happens to come back, you can then decide if the new woman do you want to get, get with is going to be there or if you want to go back to the old woman. But the point is, it'll be your choice versus leaving it all to her and what she wants, you know? So that's the first question. The second question he had is, does, does the men pull away test work on women who are losing interest or have low interest? Personal example, recently asked a woman out for a third date and did not, she did not give me a straight answer, but made her bubble look pretty with ha ha and emojis. I personally chose to cut contact because I know this is generally a rejection, but I'm kind of convinced she left the door open considering she initiated the post-date text. I also didn't even text her a lot because I'm not trying to build rapport over the phone. Kudos to you for learning that lesson. So I, look, guys, I make my dating life super simple, right? Women that have high interest will say yes and darn near plan the date for you, but they'll let it be known like the previous girl. He, she said, uh, I, I went on a date with this guy twice. I asked him both times. Now we want him to get into the habit of obviously asking her, but the fact that she asked him two times, she's definitely interested, right? So there's no there's no mix up of whether or not she's interested. She's asking him out. So at the very least, if you're going to a girl and saying, hey, wanna go on a date, the next answer should be, yes, that sounds great, that'd be awesome, hey, where are we going? Or I'll bring the snacks. Anything other than that, that puts you into maybe land, and it's worse when they almost when they say nothing, but to, to not give a direct answer, that's usually either a no or a I'm pulling back. So these are situations where if this was the case where that happened to me, I would like, you know what? I'm getting the read now. I'm not texting this to her. I'm, I'm telling you guys. At this point, I'm beating a read that, okay, she's not saying yes directly to the date. So I'm getting the idea that maybe she's not as interested in me as I thought that she was. But I still need to prove that to my brain. So I would wait a week and then I'd ask her one more time, hey, so-and-so, I uh, found this great restaurant, wanted to see if you were free on this day or this day, let me know what works for you. At that point, if I ask a second time and she answers the same way she did with emojis, smiley faces, whatever, but isn't directly saying yes, or hey, maybe she's doing this because she's like, thinks she's gonna read like a smiley face equals a yes, but again, women that like you will help you, they will give direct answers. So if I did this a second time, and I got the same response or ha ha ha's or emojis or blah, 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 or she went on some other tangent, I would know at that point, okay, she's not interested in dating me anymore. And then I would stop contacting her because again, there are too many other women out there that would give me a direct, all the women that have, that have I've dated, have been in relationships with, that have been highly interested. Anytime I've said, hey, so-and-so, let's do a thing. Immediate answer, sure, okay, no problem. Wow, that sounds great. So because I've had that experience, the experience of, oh, ha 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 ha, oh, you're funny, as being an answer, I, I don't accept that because while now I got to sit there and wait to decide what she actually means while this girl over here is ready to just say yes and pack me up in the car, like, what are we even doing? So this is a situation where it doesn't sound like she's all that highly interested. And so, but I understand that it can be hard as guys to get that. So that's why I tell you guys, if a woman you ask out and she doesn't respond or she says she goes or was whatever, I always tell you guys to ask one more time. That way your brain will have concrete evidence to itself Oh, she's giving me signs to indicate she's not interested. Harry said she didn't say direct yes, so it's a no. So I've now seen this and I'm out of here. And sometimes as guys, we have to do things more than once to really convince ourselves that what, what's going on is actually going on. So at this point, I know if I got this kind of answer, more often than not, I'd be like, okay, she's out because she's not she's not saying yes, it's a, it's a done deal. But for all of you guys that are just starting to learn some of this stuff, make it a point. If you ask a woman out, she doesn't respond, or she, you know, is flaky with her response or says maybe or whatever and doesn't give you a direct answer. Or she says, oh, I'll let you know. Give it a week. Ask her one more time. You get the same answer. Get out. Because I don't want you guys concentrating on women that are going to give you maybe answers. When again, there are women out there that would directly say yes. So then the third question he asked was, say if the woman comes back. So she pulls away. And then, you know, say he waits two weeks, three weeks, a month. She comes back into his good graces. 
Say if the woman comes back, should we just try to schedule another date on the spot or make her wait a little longer? This is more of a general question. So I say this again, anytime women reach out, let's say she was like flaky with her text for a while. She wasn't responding or whatever. And then like two weeks later, she reaches out, hey, so-and-so, hi, what's going on? So that, that's a positive sign. She's, she's in our aura. So she's, she's reaching out again. This is the time where I'd be like, you know, maybe like, hey, so-and-so, like, you know, what's, what's, what's been up? Oh, I've been doing so, this is now, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd be like, great. You know, I've been you know, just doing whatever, you know, blah, 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 banter, banter. And then at that point, I'm not trying to stay on the phone. I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm really busy right now, but you know what? I'd love to catch up. Why don't we go out to dinner this week at such and such place? Let me know if you're free. Again, we're going right back into, after two or three messages, we're going back into asking for the date because all we're trying to do with this woman is get her out on dates to build up her interest level, right? So at that point, again, she has a decision to make. Is she going to say yes to the date or is she going to suddenly go ghost again? Which let's be real, guys, as much as it sucks, if a woman comes back into your life and you ask her on a date and she stops answering, you want that to happen because she's coming into your life now to try to use you for attention. We're not trying to give women attention points. We're trying to date women that want to date us so we can eventually get into a relationship. So if she reaches out to you and then you banter her a bit and you ask her for a date and she doesn't respond back, she's doing you a favor. She's letting you know, I unequivocally do not find you interesting enough to want to go on a date with, but I'll take these texts because I it feeds me attention and I feel wanted. Don't give her that satisfaction. Again, you ask one more time. And then at that point, if she doesn't respond back, if she gets all flaky, if she tries to like, you know, move the conversation over to something else other than a date, leave her the heck alone. Because again, there are other women out there. All right. But all this say, guys, so just to clarify again, as it pertains to pull away test and no contact, let's go with no contact first. As it pertains to no contact, no contact means that you are emphatically not reaching out to a woman, no text, no calls, no checking her Instas, no liking her posts. You are going to make her feel as though you no longer exist. Now, if she's your friend on these various social media platforms, which by the way, at the point that you start dating a woman, you should not be friends with her. Like assuming you're meeting her as a stranger, you should not be trying to go on a date and then that night trying to add her to your friends group. I leave all social media connections for after we're in a relationship. So if a woman's like on, on a third date, hey, what's your social media? I will be telling them, say, you know what? Well, I'm on Facebook, but honestly, like, unless it becomes a thing, like, I think right now we should just get to know each other. And then if we decide this goes, you know, further down the line, then we can add each other. Like, I will say that up front. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to have her trying to stalk my page if this doesn't work out. But that said, if you have already gotten to that situation and she's stalking your page and she's liking your post and all this other stuff, Again, do not take any of those as reads. The only read that you take from a woman is if she reaches out to you in a DM and says, hey, what's going on? Her liking your post, watching your stories, none of that means that she's trying to contact you. We want her to actually contact you. So if she's not, then in no contact, you are basically saying she doesn't exist anymore. Back over here to these other women. If she decides to appear again, hey, I'm back, blah, 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 you can then decide that's what you want to do. But we are not trying to wait X amount of days before we contact her again. She is gone. She no longer exists. She didn't feel like she had enough like of you to be respectful of you, to keep texting you or to say yes to your dates. Like, we, why would you want to keep trying to get her? And I get why we do it because our egos are like, but I need to prove to her why I'm worthy of this. And, and our egos don't like the idea that somebody is finding us less than desirable. It's part of the dating game. You're going to go on a couple dates with some women and they're going to realize he's just not the guy for me. And as desirable as you think you were being, she might have found somebody else that was more desirable or decided that what you're bringing to the table is not desirable for her. That, that, that's totally fine. There's going to be other women out there that will find you desirable for who you currently are. Don't spend effort and energy trying to win back a chick that is flaking on you. But if she comes back of her own accord, that means that she's been given time to sit and think and realize that you're what she wants, at which point you now are playing a different game. She goes back in, she, you ride her on a date. And then also this goes into pull away tests. More often than not, pull away tests are trying to tell you something. They're trying to tell you that for whatever reason, whatever tactic you were doing, whatever things you were saying, however often you were contacting her, those things were not gelling with her. And if it wasn't gelling with, gelling with her, I can assure you, it probably isn't gelling with most women's sensibilities. So you try to be the guy that's like, well, I should be able to text her every single day and I'm just going to keep dating until I find a girl that that's cool with. I got news for you, guy. In the beginning, most women aren't going to be cool with that. So you're going to be spending your entire dating life losing women because you're thinking you texting every day should work. Texting every day will be fine. Will be fine. Asterisks will be fine at the point that you get into a relationship. And even then, it should be three to one. 
For every three texts she initiates, you initiate one text. This is true for a lot of things across the board. For every three times she initiates an I love you, you then initiate an I love you of your own accord. For every three times she compliments you, you leave one outstanding compliment that keeps her on cloud nine for three or four weeks. I found that ratio works. I wish it didn't. I wish I could, I wish that the way we showed love and affection to women could be 50 50. But the reality is your 50 is going to feel like 150% to her, which is going to feel like too much, all right? You just being there for her and listening to her when she has problems and being able to take her on an occasional date, that is more than most guys have ever done for her, and she's going to appreciate it immensely. You doing more than that, it now makes it feel like you are, to her, like you're bribing her to be in the relationship. She doesn't want that. And more importantly, on her side of things, she's supposed to be the more affectionate one. A, a woman that is looking for a masculine man wants to be in her feminine energy. Feminine energy is compliments, is praising, is doing all the things. You doing all the things is going to make her feel like you're doing too much and that you're doing it for malicious purposes, and it's going to turn her off. So be mindful of that. So this goes to a pull-away test should let you know that the ratio of things that you're doing to her is more than it needs to be. If you're thinking, I'm doing 50-50, you're doing too much, which is why she's pulling away. So this is why, take that as a signal. Oh, maybe I need to cut back on texting. Oh, I haven't been giving her her alone time. Maybe I should give her that. Oh, I've been doing all the most. I've been complimenting her way too much. Maybe I should like curtail some of that. Like compliments are nice, but too many might be going overboard, which is why she's pulling away. And so as you start to tap into, what are the things that women actually need from me you'll start to better recognize what things you're doing that are overkill that are causing these pull-away tests. And again, to clarify, pull-away tests are not intentional tests that women are oftentimes doing. They are tests of will for you to read into what it actually means. I remember once when I was dating a girl, we were getting along great and then she started pulling away. And I thought like, you know, I was trying to call her all the time and text her all the time. And it's like, I, I ended up going to her, to her place. I was like, I just, I didn't have any self-control back then. I was like, oh my God, I just want to, I just want to see her. And I went to her place, knocked on the door and she came outside and talked to me. It was like, look, dude, like she was, she was uh, studying for a law, law, law uh, exam, which I've, I've come to learn takes a lot, you know? And she was still be able to date me, but like she was trying to see me like once a week. And I was trying to see her like three or four times a week. And she took me outside and was like, look, dude, I'm studying for a test. I got this thing going on. I'm about to travel. Like, I just need time. I need time to myself. And I need you to respect that and give it to me. And in my head, I was like, I don't want to do that. I, I want my way. I want to be able to see. We're supposed to be liking each other. How is she going to like me if I'm not around? And I was just like, you know what, dude, clearly you trying to be around her and call all the time is not working. So just do what she said. And I was like, you know what? Fine. I get it. Okay. I'll, I'll leave you alone. Went home. And for like a day and a half, I left her alone. I didn't contact her. She, at that, at that point in time, she lived like only a few blocks. Back. I could have just walked into her place. I left her alone. I didn't try to reach out to her. I didn't ask her on dates. It took a day and a half before she reached out to me. Hey, Harry, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you want to come over tonight? And that's when I really learned the lesson of like, oh, so the pull away wasn't because she was losing interest. It's because I was doing things that made her feel like I was doing the most. And that makes her look at me like I'm being needy and desperate and begging for attention. And those aren't things that attract feminine women. And so I learned that lesson and went through that. And since then, I've understood, hey, if, if a woman starts trying to pull away a bit, if, if we're in a relationship or we've been dating for a good amount of time, and she starts to have that happen before I just assume she's no longer interested. Hey, maybe like not text her for a day or maybe just, you know, you know what? You want to have uh, time to hang out with your friends for this weekend. Like, go ahead and do that. If you want to hit me up, great, but not, it's no big deal. And I found that works better, you know? So this is why I have I made that video. Like I've learned not to take away tests so personally. I use them as a means of reading into what's actually going on in the situation that this woman that seemingly had high interest in me and wanted to be around me all the time is suddenly needing space. It could be she's losing interest or it could be that I'm doing the most. And I thought more often than not, I was doing the most. And so for you guys out there, don't let that be an ego hit. Like sometimes we unintentionally are doing the most because we care about a woman or we think we already care about a woman. We already have a high interest. We want to sleep with her and our hormones are like, we got to do all the things and our hormones are going to trick us into wanting to do all the things to get her. And sometimes being able to get her authentically means not doing the most, means being patient, means holding back a bit, means not spilling our feelings out. I just care about what works. And so if what works means being a bit more patient so they'll come to me, I'm going to do that. 